this is pre-calc 11, chapter 3.1. This time we're going to be looking at factoring polynomial expressions. But you need to know what a polynomial expression is. So recall that they must have variables with non-negative integer powers. So the power here. Here the power is implied to be 1. However, the coefficients do not need to be integers, but they usually are. Okay, so let's just factor these ones. You have x, x, since this is a positive, and this is a positive, it must be positive here. Factors of 2 are 2 and 1, and they add up to 3. Here we have 2x, and here we have x. This is a negative 5, so 1 must be positive, 1 must be negative, and you can guess and test, but here we have 5, and here we have 1. 5x minus 2x, that's 3x, and that's how we factor that one. Okay, and if you don't see how to factor a quadratic right away, then we use PFS, product factor and sum. This method is especially useful when the leading coefficient isn't 1. Recall that the coefficients are lettered A, B, C, and the product is 3 times negative 72, and that is negative 216. And this is A times C. And we start with the larger number as positive. And the question is why? Because our sum is positive. So the bigger number minus a smaller number is going to give us a positive. So we look for factor pairs. So we start with 216 and negative 1. And then we go 108, negative 2. The sum here is 215. The sum here is 106. And we continue down, 72, negative 3, 69. And 4 goes into 216, so we have negative 4 and 54. This adds up to 50. And 5 is not a factor. 6 is a factor. We can also tell that 6 is a factor by taking 2 times 3. And the sum is 30. And we are getting closer to our sum. This is, we're looking for the B value equal to 6. Next, 7 is not a factor. 8 is a factor because we know 2 times 4. And 9 is a factor, 24, and this is 15, sorry, this one's 19, and we have 18 and negative 12. Again, 12 is a factor because we have 2 and 6. And this is 6, so it's good. And remember, these add up to the x term. And in math, we like to notice patterns, because patterns make solving problems quicker. We know the sum is 6. These numbers are very large, and they're very far away from 6. So what we can do is we can skip down and just skip some values. If the sum is not close. Now we take these values, and we have 3x squared plus 18x minus 12x minus 72. And this value and this value, we just copy from the original. But these are our new values for our x terms. 
Next, what we want to do is group and we can factor out a minus sign. That makes it easier sometimes. Now we factor this. There's a 3x that we can factor out of both of these terms. So that leaves x plus 6. And here, we can factor out a 12 out of both terms. So that gives us x plus 6. These two binomials should match. Otherwise, something went wrong in our calculations. Because they're the same, we can factor them. We just take the factors from the front, 3x minus 12, and x plus 6. And that completely factors this one. Next, let's look at factoring with rational coefficients. Recall that terminating or repeating decimals can be written as rationals. And if you simplify them first, then factoring is easier. So, factor this. This is the tenth decimal place, so we need to convert these to tenths. So we have x squared plus 8 over 10, x minus 24 over 10. If we're going to divide by 10, we have to multiply the numerator by 10. Let's simplify this x squared plus 4 over 5x minus 12 over 5. Now we need a common denominator everywhere, and that's 5. So that's 1 fifth. And this becomes 5x squared. 5 divided by 5 becomes 1. And we're factoring out the fifth, so we have 4x and then minus 12. Again, we're factoring out the 1 fifth. Okay, now we have integers in our polynomial, and we can use the PFS method. So P is A times C, that's minus 60. Our B is positive. So that must mean our larger number must be positive. If we have 60 and negative 1, that's a sum of 59. That's very far away from 4. So we should skip a few values. So 15 is a factor of 60, 4, and the sum is 11. Next we have 12 and negative 5, and that's 7. Next we have 10 and negative 6, and that's 4, and that's exactly what we want. So now we have 1 fifth. We have 5x squared. We copy this term. Now we have these as our x terms, so that's plus 10x minus 6x, and copy the last term, minus 12. And let's add the brackets in, and we change this to a plus. So we have 1 fifth, 5x, we pull a 5x out of both these terms, we're left with x plus 2, minus, and there's a 6 that's common, so we have x plus 2. And finally, we factor out the x plus 2, 1 fifth, 5x minus 6, x plus 2. Now, if we get something complicated, we can factor with patterns by using substitution. But remember to substitute back after you do the factoring. Otherwise, your answer is incomplete. We don't want to factor with an x minus 2, so let's replace x minus 2 with y. So y equals x minus 2. So now we just have 6y squared, 17 y plus 12. This looks a little easier to factor. 
So our product is 6 times 12, and that's 72. 72 and 1 would give us a sum of 73. So we want to skip a few. Let's try 12 and 6. That gives us 18. The next one is 9 and 8, and that gives us 17. So that's good. 6y squared, and we're replacing the 17y with a 9 and an 8, plus 9y plus 8y plus 12. We copy the last one down. Add our brackets, and then we factor. We can factor a 3y out of both. So it's 2y plus 3, and we can factor out a 4. And that's 2y plus 3. Now we factor out our binomial. So we have 3y plus 4 times 2y plus 3. Are we finished? No, because we have to substitute back. So now we have, and use brackets, y is equal to x minus 2 plus 4, and again we're substituting y with x minus 2, plus 3. And you have to do one last step. This needs to be distributed out and simplified. So this is 3x minus 6 plus 4 is minus 2. And we have minus 4 and 3, so that's minus 1. And that's our final answer. And when we're doing the difference of squares with patterns, recall that a squared minus b squared always factors as a plus b times a minus b. Or you could also do a minus b times a plus b. But be aware that we don't have to necessarily have a squared and b squares as perfect squares. We can just use the square root. Okay, so let's look at the first one. We have x plus 3. We need to take the square root of this, that's 2, and then the square root of this, that's just y minus 4. And now we have, we did the plus case, now we've got to do the minus case. x plus 3 minus, again, the square root of 4 is 2, and we have y minus 4. And now we need to simplify. So we have x, we have a 2y, we have 3, and we have minus 8, so that's minus 5. Here again we have an x, now we have a minus 2y, and we have a 3, and we have a positive 8, so that's plus 11. And that's complete. Let's try one more. We have square root of x minus 2 squared, so that's just x minus 2. We need to take the square root of 3. And now we multiply by the square root of this, which is y plus 2. Again, we have x minus 2, and this time we're subtracting. Again, square root 3, and y plus 2. And we simplify. x plus root 3y, and we have negative 2, and we have plus 2 root 3. So that can't be simplified. But let's put the positive term first. 2 root 3 minus 2 x minus root 3y. And both of these are minus, so it doesn't matter. 2 root 3 minus 2. Now, how do we check if a binomial is a factor of a quadratic? This one's a little bit trickier. But we have x minus 3, and we have ax plus b. This is our unknown binomial. Because if we have a binomial, and a quadratic, our other factor must be a binomial. 
And this is equal to this. So this factor times the unknown equals this. Now we expand this side and we need to FOIL. So we have AX squared minus 3AX plus BX minus 3B. And again, we just expand or distribute. Now we have to match the powers. So we have x squared, x squared. So this is ax squared equals x squared. Let's take the x's. So minus 3ax plus bx equals the 4x. And we also have the constant term. Minus 3b equals negative 9. Here we can just cancel out the x squared. Make sure when you cancel this one that you don't put zero. When you're canceling out by dividing, you get a one. So a equals one. Here we're just canceling out the x terms. So minus three a plus b equals four. Well, we've already calculated a, so that's one. So we just have minus three plus b equals four. Therefore, b equals seven. Here, we divide both sides by negative 3, so b equals positive 3. These two don't match. Therefore, no solution. Which means that this is not a factor. And the three dots here means therefore. We write therefore in math a lot, that's why we just do three dots. Next one is 2x minus 4, a factor of 6x squared minus 2x minus 20. We do 2x minus 4 and an unknown binomial, ax plus b, equals 6x squared minus 2x minus 20. We expand this side. So this equals 2ax squared minus 4ax plus 2bx minus 4b. So we have to equate the x squared term. So 2ax squared equals 6x squared, and for our x's we have minus 4ax plus 2bx equals negative 2x. And our constant term, negative 4b equals minus 20. Let's do this one first because it's easy. Divide both sides by negative 4b equals 5. Here it's easy too. We cancel out the x squared. We got 2a is equal to 6. Divide both sides by 2. We have a is equal to 3. Divide both sides by x. We get minus 4a plus 2b equals negative 2. We just have to plug in our values here and check. Minus 4 times 3 plus 2 times 5 equals negative 2. This is negative 12. This is plus 10. Negative 2. This is correct. So, so 2x minus 4 is a factor. And sorry, we have to say no solution x minus 3 is not a factor. And that completes this lesson.